So to wrap up bonds, I want to just go over one more time the three types of bonds. We have covalent bonds, which are the strongest type of bonds. We have hydrogen bonds, which are the weakest kind of bonds. And we have ionic bonds, which are in the middle and is a charge attraction between two ions. One of the reasons why bonds is such an important concept in biology is that the way that molecules are linked together determines the overall shape that that molecule takes on. At the simplest level, this can be molecules like methane. So it, methane has um, five atoms, and methane will take on the shape because of the way that the bonds are and the way that electrons end up located because of the bonds into this sort of long pyramid. And so if you imagine methanes floating around, they can only stack as close together as you could stack these pyramids. Ammonia is another um, example here, NH3, and it's a, a shorter squatter pyramid. But again, if you imagine ammonia's floating around, they take up this space and other things can't come into it. Water is like a little um, triangle floating around. And again, this is important because other molecules can't come into this triangle that takes up that space. In biology, we're going to actually be looking at molecules that are hundreds of atoms long and sometimes even thousands of atoms long. And so because of this, molecules can take on, so there'll be hundreds or thousands of carbons long. Because of this, they can take on really complex shapes, and that's sort of what's imagined here. So this is a um, molecular model. So each one of these um, represent an atom that's part of this molecule. And when you have all these different atoms together, you can get complex shapes like this kind of like little wheel looking thing, for example. The one depicted here is natural endorphins in the brain. And highlighted here is this structure here. And again, notice it's kind of got this wheel part, but then it's got this oxygen and hydrogen attached here as well. And this shape is an object that's like a key that fits into a lock, which is this receptor in nerve cells. So when the endorphin is, comes in, that key fits into the lock, this creates the positive emotions that we associate with endorphins. If we look at a drug like morphine, and again highlighting this part here, morphine in some ways does not have the same shape as endorphins, but this particular area is the same shape as um, the natural endorphins. So morphine actually is a key that also fits into the same lock. And so when morphine binds there, we also get these positive uh, feelings in our brain. And that is why morphine is um, a drug that is used by people and abused by people sometimes um, on, and why it becomes addictive. So morphine is an example of an opio opioid class of drug. Um, heroin is an example of this. Um, uh, opium, that's where the name opioids come from. Laudanum is the old-fashioned name for that. So a whole class of drugs um, have this same matching shape. And shape is a theme that we'll come back to over and over over the course of the semester.